Hi there. Let's finish our lesson over correlation. The correlation, R, is not resistant to outliers. The correlation is calculated using the mean and the standard deviation of both x and y, and those means and standard deviations are not resistant to outliers, so the correlation isn't going to be resistant to outliers either. Let's see what happens when we put some outliers in a data set. We'll see how the correlation is affected. So let's reconsider the manatee and powerboat data, and we're going to enter an observation, again, I'm making this up, where there are 850,000 powerboat registrations. So for that, we are going to enter an 850 into the explanatory variable list. And we are going to associate that with 59 manatee deaths. We will put that into the response variable list. So let's take a look at the data. I'm going to have to load it back in here. So let's take boat. Let's see, where is it? There it is. Let's take boat. And I'm going to store that again into list one. And then we'll take manatee or mantee. And we'll store that into list two. There it is. So we'll store that. There we go. Into list two. So I'm going to press stat and enter, and I'm going to go in, and we are going to add a value to this data set. So I'm going to press the up arrow twice, and we'll go back to the bottom of the list. So I'm going to enter an 850 into list one. That represents powerboat registrations. And then I'm going to associate that 850 with 59 manatee deaths. We will put that into list two. That is where the manatee deaths go. So we have added a new value to this data set. Let's graph the scatter plot then. Zoom nine. So take a look. What we have created is an outlier. So notice there is a gap here in between the rest of the data, then there's a gap, and then there is this point right here. So that point is consistent with the linear pattern. It is still considered, though, an outlier because it is, if you will, away from the other data in the data set. So let's summarize that there. This creates an outlier in the scatter plot. So note the gap. But let's see what happens to the correlation. So to calculate the correlation, I'm going to go back to the home screen. So on the home screen, I'm going to hit the stat button and go over to calculate. It's option number eight that I'm going to use. So I'm just going to type eight. Again, you don't need to mess with this as long as your data are in list one and list two. We are good to go. And like I said in the previous video, if you are using a calculator where you don't see this menu option, if you select option at number eight, you can simply press enter and take it to the home screen and execute the command because on the older calculators it assumes the data is in list one and list two. So notice here is our new correlation. It is 0.9557 or to two decimal places we'll call it 0.96. So understand what's happened. This creates an outlier in the scatter plot. Notice the gap, but the correlation increases. The correlation increases to, I believe, what did I say? I'm going to have to go take a peek at, again, oh, 0.96. Because that point is consistent with the linear pattern. Previously, when we calculated the correlation up in example number one, the correlation we got was 0.94. So all we have done by including another point, even though it's an outlier, it is still a point that follows the general linear trend in that graph. So we're still following the general linear trend. So we have strengthened the correlation, and it has increased from 0.94 to 0.96. Of course, there's not a whole lot that it can increase because we can't increase over one. So, to the back side. So, this time, let's give it a second to focus here. We're going to go back to that observation with the 850,000 powerboat registrations, but this time, we're going to create a different type of outlier. 
So let's press stat and edit. We're gonna go in there in list two. I'm gonna press the up arrow twice and take me to the bottom of the list. So instead of the observation of 59, I'm gonna change that observation to a 21. Okay, now let's regraph our scatter plot here. So take a look at what we have now. We still have an outlier. Again, this point really is completely away from the other points. And notice it also does not follow the linear trend, the linear pattern that we had seen in the scatter plot. So take a look. In this case, we've created another outlier, but it is not consistent with the linear pattern. Thus, the correlation, you would expect it to decrease, but you might be surprised how much it decreases. So the correlation decreases, and let's go calculate it. So I'm going to go to the home screen, stat button over to the calculate menu, option number eight. Decreases actually quite a bit. So the original correlation was 0.94, it's now down to 0 0.60 if we round this to two decimal places. So, and again, the farther away we get from one, the weaker the correlation here. So the correlation is significantly weaker, 0 0.60 by including the outlier. This outlier weakens the linearity of the overall pattern. So because of the position of this outlier, it does not match the linear trend in the data, and that detracts from the correlation. It lowers the correlation. It's pretty dramatically affected from 0.94 down to 0.6. It's pretty dramatically affected by that outlier. So some other comments about correlation in general. It is difficult to guess the value of a correlation from a scatter plot. It's very difficult just to look at a scatter plot and say, oh, that correlation's 0.7 or that correlation's negative 0.3. The truth is, if we're going to talk about a specific correlation, we're going to have to calculate it from the data or it's going to have to be given to us. Guessing it from a scatter plot is just not something that's feasible. So something to think about, it is customary to report the mean and the standard deviation the mean and the standard deviation of both variables along with R, of both the X and the Y variables. Just as a matter of practice. So here's the last thing then that I wanted to talk about today on this study guide. So if R equals exactly positive one, this indicates an exact positive linear relationship and if r equals negative one this indicates an exact negative linear relationship between the two variables. You can't have a correlation greater than positive one and you can't have a correlation lower than negative one. The mathematical proof of this is far beyond the scope of this class. So I think the best way to demonstrate this to you is to do a simple example.